We're going to try it this way. How about that? And I'll just upload it. First, I am Jesse C. Love, also known as Teacher Love, Coach Love, with love naturally. This is the Love Your Help, Love Your Life, Love Yourself education and information segment that I do. I got a nudge to do some research and then share it with you, so that's why I do what I do. July is National Minority Mental Illness Awareness Month. And, excuse me. I'm going to talk about that. It's not necessarily just us. It's minorities, period. I want to thank Grace and Hope Consulting LLC for coming on my video for the first time that I'm aware of and sharing the video. And thank you, Cho. I think I said your name right. Or Chow Halegra for actually speaking. Monday, I did the segment where I talked about suicide because it was like the, we'd just gone through like the 24th or 25th anniversary of phyllis hyman's death by suicide from depression and don cornelius donny hathaway karen washington and so many others those are just celebrities that we know about as well as how it's growing with little boys and little girls how we're making them grow up too early little man you know and them being invisible not wanting to go to school that was from july 1st so Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, I will be talking about something related to mental illness, interchangeably with mental health. The National Suicide Prevention Hotline is 1-800-273-8255. T-A-L-K is the last four. And if they don't want to talk, you don't want to talk, you can also text them the word TALK or the word NAMI, N-A-M-I, to 741-741, and they have trained reps that will help you. Safeblackspace.org is someplace in Sacramento that I'm aware of where you can go and talk, as well as NAMI.org with the National Alliance on Mental Illness, and EachMindMatters.org. Awareness and positive action helps with our healing. So I want to go over some assumptions and to talk about misperceptions of being mentally ill and what it means i'm not a medical professional in case i didn't say that i do research and readings so i'm not here trying to cure mitigate diagnose or treat any kind of disease health issue or disease consult your medical professional do your own research just don't self-diagnose all right chemical imbalance in the brain is possibly the reason why there's a mental illness as well as the possibility of a genetic disposition. I recently read about singer Lizzo, L-I-Z-Z-O or Lizzo. I saw her on the BET Awards doing a musical dedication to Missy Elliott and she was singing, I Can't Stand the Rain. It's one of her favorite songs. Big, beautiful black woman, but she don't like this negligee and I'm like, who is that? But it was like this full outfit and she recently posted, or at least I saw it on July 1st, I quote, I'm depressed and there's no one I can talk to because there's nothing anyone can do about it. Life hurts. I self-love so hard because everything feels like rejection. It feels like the whole world be ghosting me sometimes. Sad AF today, but this too shall pass. S.O. all the messages of love. Thank you. And in that, Mark Jacobs ended up posting that he struggles and has struggled with depression his entire life. When I saw the video, it had over 1.6 million views and over 17,000 comments. A lot of celebrities reached out to her as well as those who are not celebrities reached out to her. I don't have that kind of pull or reach. I don't think I have a video that's had over 2,000 views since I've been doing this and definitely not even a thousand comments let alone 17,000 nevertheless I know I'm reaching and helping someone even if it's just this someone recently she even had Lizzo Lizzo had 22,000 people in a stadium while she got ready to perform breathing in love and exhaling toxicity you know her post however came after all those performances with BET and even the MTV performance where she did a dedication to Class Act with Whoopi Goldberg. And Whoopi saw it and invited her to come speak on The View. She still posted about her depression. 
because she realizes she has triggers. She gets triggered when she feels rejected as well as when she feels inadequate. And she said her sadness can be as temporary as her joy. It's like a wave. She's also play, aiming to play Ursula in the upcoming movie Under the Sea, the remake of it. Hey, let's go over some assumptions and some truths and a few statistics today. Not in any particular order, but I'm going to go through them. There's about 10. Number one, people with mental illness are dangerous and violent. That is an assumption that is not true because usually it's the people that have mental illness that are the victims of violence. The film industry and media are the ones that exasperate what mental illness is and make those who experience it be villains. You know, the movies that are out. What is that? The Shining, Psycho, and the one where the guy was like flava beans. He had his mouth covered. You know, that's what we see because of what media portrays Jack Nicholson. You know, no. Mental Ill, mentally ill people are more likely to be the victims of violence. And that's from the American Journal of Mental Health. Most are not violent. There's even a therapist who in her 25 years of practice with mental illness patients, it's been one in 10 who've actually been violent. Number two, most homeless people are mentally ill. Now we'll see occasions where there are mentally ill people who have schizoaffective disorder, bipolar, major depressive disorder, schizophrenia, and you may see them talking to themselves. However, it's only 33% of the population of homeless people who are mentally ill. California alone with the way that there's no rent cap and people are working and still not able to afford their rent or gentrification and being pushed out, they're homeless now. Going to work, homeless because they can't afford where they're living. Number three, European Americans suffer more from mental illness. Not necessarily the truth. It's just that they go get the help more often because they have access to it or they have the insurance for it or they have the finances for it. The truth is minorities suffer more from mental illness and it may have a lot to do with the economic and cultural barriers and disadvantages, the increased stress, the depression, the cultural stigma regarding counseling, therapy, and even medication. I'm not a big advocate of medication. I've been on some before, years ago, when I had a breakdown in college. I was away in college, matter of fact, on a roll and everything, and just had a breakdown and went to get some help. Major depressive disorder out of nowhere. Truth is, I'd had depression and been experiencing depression throughout a lot of my childhood. It's just that at that moment, over 20 years ago, I broke. So I tried medication. Didn't like the way it felt. Didn't like the way it turned my nails. So I was like, this ain't gonna work. Mm -mm, we gotta find something else. So Kimber Shelton, a doctor, told Talkspace that individuals seeking mental health treatment that are minorities... They are more at risk for being called crazy, so they don't. Yeah. People who look or act happy or normal aren't mentally ill. That's not true. I even posted a picture that someone did of a man who was smiling, but on the inside of his brain, they had a picture of a little boy sitting on the floor with his knees bent and his head down with his knees because of a mental illness. Jessica Marshana, a therapist, told Talkspace that she had a family friend that died by suicide. Everybody thought he had everything going for him. He had a great career. He was happily married. Nobody understands why he decided to die by suicide. The truth is mentally ill people don't look or act a certain way. How are we supposed to look and act? Other than what the media exacerbates or what movies exacerbate. How are we supposed to look and act? <laughs> no, don't do that. Don't perceive that as the abnormality that we're supposed to look like what you see in movies. No. 
Another assumption is people with mental illness are at fault because they don't have enough willpower to change it. You know, I'm starting to look at it as we're a living testimony that recovery is possible. If there's, if I break a bone, you're not going to tell me to just pray about it. Or you're not going to tell me it's just in my head and you see that my leg is hanging in a way it shouldn't be. You're going to tell me to go get help. That's the same way with mental illness. We don't know what's going on. That's a misperception or misconception about it. Yeah. Don't judge somebody by the outside. Just peacefully support. Uh-huh. You wouldn't tell somebody that has pancreatic cancer that they are pancreatic cancer and it's their fault that they have it. You wouldn't tell them that. You wouldn't tell somebody who's autistic it's their fault. They're they're autistic. No, you'd be supportive. You'd ask them how you could help them. You'd find ways to support them and not trigger something, even if it meant food changes. Yeah. Mental illness and physical illness are separate, as if it's all in somebody's head. No, the brain and the body are connected. The body and the brain are connected, which is why I've been trying to figure out what this pain is. I know I'm not depressed. I'm not feeling depression. Now, I have a little sadness about being in California, but I'm not depressed. And we're not finding out what it is. So, we just got to go deeper. The mind affects the body. The body affects the mind. Just like a mother who sacrifices her body for 10 months in order to carry a child and bring forth that child into the world. During that time, she may develop postpartum depression or depression that becomes postpartum after the birth. Her husband should not be telling her to snap out of it. It's not like it's a light switch that can be turned on and turned off. You support her. You find out how you can help her. Yeah, that's what you do. Mental illness defines the sufferer, another assumption. No, you don't say that he is cancer or she is cancer or he is pancreatic. No, he has cancer. He experiences, I say experience, or he suffers with depression or suffers with anxiety or experiences the anxiety. Not he is anxiety. Uh -uh. We develop coping skills. Sharing the information helps to take the cover off to help someone else, basically. Let's see. Another assumption, they are fundamentally different people. No, they're not. Don't let media and film give you extreme portrayals of people that have mental illness and then you think that they're different from you. No, I haven't seen A Beautiful Mind, but that's something that one of the sites that I was looking at spoke on. The truth is we're usually not so different and it's possible for someone to become mentally ill and then treat the illness. It could be your local food restaurant owner who has anxiety, experiences anxiety. You may not know unless they tell you. Many sufferers don't mention the illness because of what people at their jobs will say. Yeah, fear of being fired even. Those who speak about it, yeah. We bring awareness to it. Stars and everyday people, you know, the stars and the everyday people, both publicly and professionally, openly talk about the struggles with mental illness. Kevin Love, I watched him have his breakdown during that Cavs final, the whole, that series, when he broke down in front of thousands of people on the court. He eventually started talking about his mental illness. You have David Banner, who came to realization that he was depressed. And the way that he dealt with it, the coping skill that he had, he would use women, having different women all the time, instead of dealing with his depression. Lizzo and how she's come out talking about hers. Mark Jacobs, Demi Lovato and her health initiative called Be Vocal, where she's talking about her bipolar disorder or illness celebrities that are starting to talk about what it is that they are going through i think 
what is that? Wanda Sykes is even now talking about her mental illness. Wouldn't it be great if when we start looking up mental illness images that we saw people such as celebrities post it? Wouldn't that be great? Yeah. We have to give voice to our concerns by locating a safe place to openly talk. You don't have to suffer in silence or seek harmful self-medicating behaviors and practices like what I said David Banner with him using women. That's self-medicating. You know, you got to have a drink every single day or you got to have all these bottles around you or you got to have you a six pack once a week just to unwind or whatnot and then go back to work and then the next day you gotta have you some more alcohol or you gotta smoke weed or something that will alter your mind to get you away from thinking about what it is you need to deal with that's self-medicating or you eat you gotta have a donut or two you know there's other ways that are healthier to cope with a mental illness and speaking about it we can improve with therapy and sharing our stories and realizing that we're not alone and recovery is possible whether that's art therapy yoga you know there's some people i think that they started working out a lot it could be music therapy learning to play an instrument pet therapy it could be being around children going to the hospital, spending time with the elderly. There are other coping mechanisms that are healthier than the negative self-medicating. So Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, 1.11 p.m. Pacific Standard Time is when I aim to do this for the month of July, talking about mental illness, mental health. <laughs> God bless me. Okay, I need to take me some multivitamin. That's like, I've sneezed twice in the last couple of days. Anyway, <laughs> I appreciate your time. Thank you for watching the recording. I I apologize for those of you who've been looking for me since 111. This has been over three and a half hours I've been trying to do this, and it's been an issue. Whereas you have all this nonsense that's loaded without a problem. I know somebody needs this, so this is the fourth day and it's recorded. Woo! Make it a lovely day. Not just for you. Find someone else to make it a lovely day for them too. And remember that the first wealth is your health. Love you. <laughs>